Hi there, I'm Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting and I want to show you a few different ways to stitch a feather. So I am a firm believer um, in that not all of our brains work the same. So we all kind of need different ways for how to stitch something. So the first kind of feather that I want to show you um, is going to be a no backtrack feather. So I'm just going to give myself a spine and you can use any kind of marking tool. I'm just going to use a chalk roller. And I'm just going to do now if you're new to feathers, you want to do just a very gentle slight curve. Okay, if you are advanced, then you can make those curves a little more curvaceous if you would like. But just starting out, do a slight curve or even practice your feathers on a straight line. The other tip is always give yourself parameters for where your feather should be. So if you're quilting on an actual quilt sample or um, quilt top, you should have some sashing or whatnot that you're going to work um, within. So a no backtrack feather is like a hook. So you're just going to come up and do a gentle C curve, hook it around, and come back and touch the line. C curve, leave yourself enough space between this line and the line you just made to get out. C curve, space, come up and around. Now this is a no backtrack feather because you don't need to actually stitch on any lines that you've previously stitched on. Um, something that you can do as a nice little cheater method would be to kind of echo coming back down. Make kind of like an open funky spine. And then you come out. And then for my last one, I do like a teardrop shape and just kind of tack off my threads right there at the top. But that's a fun little way to do just a quick feather design. And if your threads match with your top, um, it won't look super messy. And over time, as you do this, it'll get neater and neater. The other thing that you could do is come in and maybe do a couple wavy lines just to make the middle look dense, uh, but this way you don't have to worry about practicing backtracking to make your feathers pop. Then next, we're going to do a traditional feather, okay? A traditional feather utilizes an ear type shape. So you're just going to do the same motion over and over and over. These kind of feathers are really great for sit down quilters because sit down quilters have a small area that they can quilt within. So you can get a lot of feathers in a long run uh, with these traditional style feathers. Um, doesn't mean you can't do them on a long arm. I'm about to show you how to do them on a long arm, but they are great for sit down quilters. So we're going to come up and I like to think of kind of half of a heart and touch and you go right on that top line that you stitch, backtrack and touch your spine and touch your spine. So you backtrack up, swoop up and out. Now I try very hard not to backtrack too much down here because if I keep putting layers of thread in here, this is gonna get really wide and really fat and just full of thread. So as soon as I can touch a previously stitched line, I stop and go back up just to close off that feather. So I stopped right here where I could touch it. The good thing about this feather, and I kind of progress in from the hook to the traditional to the bump back, um, it's just, it's getting you that muscle memory. So it's the same motion over and over and over.
Now, if you want, you can stitch a line right down here through the middle, but backtracking takes a lot of practice. So you're either gonna wanna go really slow or really fast, but it only takes a second for those lines to go straight through those pretty little teardrop tips you got in there and ruin the feathers that you just made. So your other option I'll show you um, after stitching this side is another way you could come down. So ear or half a heart, backtrack and stitch. Up and over and down and touch. So if you need a cheater way to backtrack back down to stitch one side or the other, you just come up and echo and use the side of your hopping foot to go around all of those feathers. That'll give you a nice, clean, consistent echo. And then you end up at the bottom and you can do your other side of your feathers. But just to keep it the same, we're just gonna echo it. So you can see what it would look like at the top when it's finished as well. And especially if your thread matches, no one's gonna notice this extra little line right in here where you snuck out to do that echo and snuck out to do this echo. It all just kind of works and blends together. You see that? No one's gonna notice that. It's barely even there. So now I wanna show you what's called a bump back feather. For a bump back feather, I like to have some pretty deep curves, okay? Um, and so that's why I say that this one is a little more advanced than the other ones because you need to be able to get in and out of those curves. If you're not good at getting in and out of the curves, your feathers can get a little wonky or they can get very long trying to compensate for the space in here of the curve. But I wanna show you a little trick and you can use this trick in the traditional and in the no backtrack. But once you try these two without the trick, and then try this one with the trick, you'll be like, oh my gosh, where was that my whole life? Get a line from the apex of your curve out to your sashing and the apex of your curve out to your sashing. Um, and so that line has made such a big difference for me. So I'm gonna start my feathers. Oops. And I'm gonna do bump back. So my first bump back, um, we're just gonna start with a regular feather. And the bump back feathers are called bump back because you come up and over and touch, bump back along the outside, pull it out and around. Come up and touch, bump back, come up around and down. This one takes a little bit of trying. Come up and touch, bump back. And I like these feathers because they reach. It would be a lot harder to pull a feather out into a corner than it is to just swoop it up in that corner and come back. Okay, so now what I like to do, as you approach the line, you don't pass it, you respect it. Okay, so we're breaking that curve in half. So let's not pass the line, which means I have to bump back a lot. Okay, come up and do my feather. Come up and do my feather. Okay, so now we are below the line, and now that we've completed all the way to the inside of our curve, we can go past the line. So I'm gonna pull a feather around, like it's tucking behind my other one. Come up and touch, bump back, pull out and around. Come up and touch, bump back, pull out and around. Come up and touch, okay? So that's my bump back feather, and traditionally, um, I will do some kind of filler or something in here along the outside to get down or I'll follow right in the middle on my spine. So I start with my solid one, come up and touch, bump back, around and down. Come up and touch, bump back, around and down. Respecting that line as we approach it not worrying about it once we're, that curve is filled in and we're past it. 
If you've never done feathers like this before, I want you to go home and give it a try. Go into your studio, start mapping out some feathers. And whether you do the no backtrack, the traditional or the bump back, use those lines and see if they help you to get around the curves. See how you can kind of just sneak out of there at any time? Let's see what that looks like. I wonder if I can get my camera angle a little more on top. See how there's a lot of movement compared to the traditional style and even more so compared to a no backtrack style. Just gives you like those big fluffy fat moving feathers. And then this is kind of more of a traditional um, old school type feather which is why they call it traditional. Uh, but this is, you can still get all of the same movement with these kind of feathers and it's you're basically just moving the needle or the fabric in a different pattern to get them. So you can still get all this movement with these traditional feathers. You just have to put those registration lines in the curve so that you can respect them and curve along with them. Another style of feather for the no backtrack is one that always looks like seaweed to me, but this one is one that I would do before I did a traditional feather. And that is just so that um, I can get down the muscle memory without having to worry about any kind of backtracking or touching. So I would do that heart shape. And when I touch my spine, come up around and do the heart shape again. Now this is a tough one because you need to be able to either bring this one down or echo around to get back down to the other side. Either is fine. Um, I actually don't think I could do it upside down. This one always takes me for a loop anyway. Okay, and we're still doing the no backtrack. So touch. That was a little too wide of a space. Curl one out. Go a little higher. I messed that one up coming down so low. But you get the idea. So it's nice to be able to progress from kind of the hook shape, right? Into the no backtrack shape. into the traditional shape where you are backtracking over the top and they're touching into the bump back. So it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of progressions that can happen with quilting. You start with a simpler shape and move your way into the shape. And the better that you get, the more you can compress them and get them together, and then also be able to kind of stack and create movement and flow. I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial um, on some just different ways that you could quilt feathers. If you're looking to learn more, I do have an online website, boldnotionquilting.com, where I have a training catalog where you can take some free or paid for classes and all kinds of notions for free motion quilting to help you better with your free motion quilting. So please visit me. The link is in the description below um, or in the description above this video. And it is boldnotionquilting.com. Check out the products for different items that you might need or the class catalog if you wanna continue some learning. Take care and happy quilting.